Well, esteemed audience has has waited patiently, and I made a promise, and I try never oh. never to break a promise to esteemed audience. So okay. we reached a point where let's hear some of these many ghost stories that these experiences you've had. Forgive me, my dog is barking. Um, uh, many ghost stories. So I grew up in, in near Fort Ward, which is um, a Civil War spot, uh, stomping grounds for the Union Army in um, Northern Virginia. And um, it was uh, it was a very haunted place. Uh, there were graveyards everywhere for people who, you know, just all over Fort Ward, Episcopal, the, uh, the grounds there, they're all sort of connected. There's a big seminary there. And I used to wander through all the time. And But the weirdest part for me was at our house, my mother put this addition on the, the, like there was a garage over top of the garage, but she never finished it. So it was always kind of creepy anyway, but every, she would stick all the Christmas presents in that space. And um, she didn't wrap them. She used to make me wrap them, which is another whole trauma as a child, because then I knew what everybody was getting. I knew what I was getting. I was forced to wrap all the presents, but I'd have to go into this little, it wasn't even a closet space. It was like this, it was like attic space above the garage. So I'd go in there and without a doubt, every time I turned the light on and the light would turn off. I thought it was a bad switch. Now I turn the light on and then it would start flickering on and off, not just turn off. Um, and it was always 10 degrees colder. And so this kept happening every time I'd have to go in there. And it started when I was like, I don't know, eight years old. And by the time I was, I don't know, 12, I literally started seeing outlines of figures of Civil War soldiers still in their uniforms, like passing through the door. And I guess I was, was it's got to be my imagination. This can't be real. This can't be real. 100% it can't be real. Um, but but as I got older, I'd have these same weird experiences. Like when I moved into the house that I live in now, um, there was an old 1970s doorbell, those long bars that would bong, you know, when somebody would ring the doorbell because the house hadn't been updated at all. And I was in my 20s and um, I had a little dog. She was part chow, part just like a mutt. And she would start barking at things at different places. And when I'd walk into that area, it would get frigidly cold. And I never, never heard the person except for the fact that in the middle of the night, the doorbells would start bonging together. And I would get up and I'd go out there and I was like, could you please just let me sleep? It was the weirdest thing. And this went on and on and on for years. And what I found, come to find out was that the day that we closed on the house, the woman who owned the house died. And I think she came back <laughs> to the house. And so I was like, okay, what do I do? She's here. So I, you know, burned some sage, started talking to her and I had a nice conversation with her asking her. I was like, dude, it's like, please, I, I, I need to get some sleep. You're waking me up with the doorbell. And for a while it stopped, but then we had kids and my son, when he was three years old, I think it was, round two or three, um, he, the, the first time he woke up in the middle of the night and I was walking by his door and I figured he was, you know, need to go to the bathroom or I need to come in and change him. He was, I think he was two. And I look in the door and he's literally full on having a conversation with somebody. And I'm like, Jack, who are you talking to? And he's like, to the lady. And I was like, Jack, you need to go back to sleep. He's like, well, she keeps talking to me. <laughs> I can't go back to sleep. I was like, oh no, she's still here. So these are just some of my ghost stories that uh, that I have had over the years. So I, I am a firm believer in ghosts. Um, I don't know if she's still here. I'm sorry if you are still here, <laughs> you know, but she's she's welcome to stay. Just don't ring those doorbells anymore. But yeah, so. Well, the phones are quiet. The lights aren't flickering. She must be relatively at least calm about this this particular moment. Yeah, or our kids are just you know teenagers now, and she doesn't know how to <laughs> deal with them. 
That's how you get rid of ghosts. Get teenagers in your house. house. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm assuming that you're you're saving some other juicy ghost stories for your your next book, and we'll we'll all be reading about them. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Having had those paranormal experiences, does that calm you down about the question of life after death or worrying about what might happen beyond this world? Ooh, interesting question. Um, I think I've always been a very spiritual person just in general. Um, I think um, for me personally, I think the greatest comfort I had, okay, I'll tell one more ghost story. The greatest comfort I had about something like this was that um, my grandmother was very ill when I moved out here. Um, And we were really close. We were super close. And she, um, she was really sick, like to the point where uh, I hadn't talked to her in like a month. um, And I'd call and check up on her, but they were like, yeah, we don't know how much longer she's going to have, but you know, um we'll let you know kind of thing and you can I I went back and it did the sort of a sort of goodbye thing but she she had cancer really bad um so I came back and it was like I don't know what time it was in the morning somewhere between probably five and six in the morning and I was you know that sort of place between sleep and awake where you don't really know if you're awake but you kind of feel awake but then you're not um I my grandmother came and said I'm leaving now and I was like where are you going and she's like well I'm 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 leaving I she's like I'm very proud of you and she said some really nice things and and um you know I she was like but I I have to go now and then I said to her I said is is grandpa here because my grandfather died when I was really young I was probably like eight years old and then at this point I was you know in my late 20s um I said is grandpa here and she's like yeah, he's the one right there. Can you see him? The one with the sexy legs. And I was like, oh my God, what are you talking about? You know, this whole, like, I never heard my grandmother talk like that. I was like, okay, so then, you know, I think it's a dream. It's all, but it felt so real. And I went to the office, went to work and I'm sitting there and I'm there for maybe 10 minutes when my mother calls and she's like, I just wanted to let you know that your, your grandmother passed away this morning. And I was like, because there's a three hour time zone difference. And I was like, what time exactly? And really, it, that's so weird. And then I was home at the funeral and I said to my Aunt Diana, I was telling her this story. And she's like, and I said, and then she said the weirdest thing. She said, she's like, grandpa was there. And she's like, she says like, the, the, she's standing right there, the one with the sexy legs. And I was like, so weird. She's like, that's what she used to always say about daddy. <laughs> my aunt's like going, she used to always say it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, um, well, there you go. Uh, you know, I guess he was waiting for her when she got there. Beautiful story. But um, for me, I, I've i never questioned the idea of something beyond. I think, um, although I'm not necessarily an extremely religious person in any way, shape, or form, um, I like sort of experiencing all of it. But I definitely feel like, you know... Um, that yeah, that there's definitely there's a there's a thereafter, you know. For me, well, for all of us. we'll all find out soon enough on a, on a long enough timeline. Oh, uh, not uh, I don't want to know too soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> many 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 novels from now. Yeah, I'm not done. I got stories to tell. I got stories to tell. I've got at least three more bannockers before I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, see? see? <laughs> exactly. I, and then uh, you you had said that E.T. is practically a documentary. So have you also had experiences with, with aliens and or with aliens? I haven't had experiences, but I firmly believe that we have been visited. I mean, all right, setting aside the footage alone that the Navy released recently, I think it was the Navy, of all the weird sightings that that their pilots have had over the years, um, I I definitely think that that you know I was a huge fan of Carl Sagan and the book Contact and the movie Contact and and the idea that there's so many billions and billions of planets out there and for it not to to have other other 
creatures on it, populations, worlds. Um, it would be a really big waste of space. Um, it would be surprising. Um, I, I, I am a little worried that, that, you know, they would not necessarily come in peace. <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, anybody who'd be visiting our world, yeah, let's, let's hope it's just not Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, I i i firmly believe in that um I, I i honestly don't know that it's a question more than just a, a in a lot of people's minds these days especially after the footage was finally released but i also feel like um that that it would be surprising to me that there wouldn't have been visitors at some point and if they can all look like E.T., that would be awesome. Or at least be as nice as he was. <laughs> yes. And make plants grow. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Fair enough. I think, uh, I don't know if it's uh, maybe the Independence Day type aliens are coming. I think it's probably a little bit more National Geographic. Maybe not quite that benign. Uh, yeah. For all I know, they've had a, a guiding hand in our evolution. Don't don't know anything. Just things that maybe make a little bit of sense to me based on what what folks have said. Yeah, uh, but I think they're definitely at the very least there are drones every so often flying through the airspace. They may not be piloted, but they're checking us out. There's and something it might not be interesting enough to warrant an actual trip down here. Like, oh yeah, look, those there, those humans are. If they don't blow themselves up, you know, <laughs> a few thousand years from now, that might be a place worth visiting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it's interesting because um, when when I was doing a lot of the research, um, you know, people talk a lot about the Egyptian pyramids and the possibility of aliens having a hand in building something like that, architecturally speaking. And in Ireland, Newgrange, the um, the I don't know if you've ever seen that, the the solstice dome that um, it's made entirely of quartz. Uh, you probably it's it's their big um mound um and it predates the egyptian pyramids and it is completely um it's a it's a it's got burial chambers but it also lines up with the winter solstice i believe it's the winter solstice every um year and one of the things that i found amazing is that if you go into a lot of the the smaller cairns the smaller mounds that they have all around those areas that were built like 10,000 years ago on the ceiling, and I have pictures of it, are, um, yes, there's a lot of these, um, the bottoms of a ship, like with oars sticking out that have been carved, but there's also these weird spirals that almost look like our spiral galaxy, and they're all over, and there's stars, and, you know, one of the, the uh, professors I was talking to said, you know, some people actually believe that that the Tuatha Dé Danann, the um, the gods and goddesses that came down to Ireland, um, actually came down from the stars, came down from another planet, and it's kind of weird when you see these things in there. You're like, huh? I could totally see that. Yeah. So you never know. The aliens come down here in their intergalactic RV, and then it's all hun. The, the, <laughs> the humans are worshiping us again. It's time to move on to the next planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we could find one. I'm not sure I'm ready for Mars. I want to be able to go outside. Well, theoretically, by the time we're able to live on Mars, uh, we'll have we'll have worked out a way to, to go outside, I imagine. How? Just really? in case, let's take better care of this planet. Yes, just in case we can't get yes. <laughs> very important to take good care of this planet, please. Yeah. 